Hello and welcome to our podcast for economics that we are calling Benefits and Costs. These are the outcomes of the decisions we need to make when we are thinking like an economist and having to deal with scarce resources. So let's go ahead and see what we're talking about here. So first off, let's just look at the words themselves. The word benefits. It has a Latin root in there of bene, which means good. And you can see that replicated in many of the Romance languages or Latin-based languages that are around. In Spanish, it's bueno. In Italian, it's bene. In French, it's bon. So we get that Latin root of B-E-N-E replicated in other words. In English, we also see this root replicated in words like beneficial, benefactor, benediction, and benevolence. And so if you ever come across the root of bene, you know that the word has something to do with the meaning of good. So if you see bene, we know that that means good. And so here we have the economics definition. A benefit is the outcome of a choice that is seen as good to the one who is making that choice. So for example, if a student chooses to work really hard on their economics homework, one benefit of that is that they will probably earn good grades. To the student who's choosing to work hard rather than hang out and just eat Cheetos, a good thing of working hard is earning good grades. Another example, if someone chooses to sleep an appropriate amount, eight or nine hours or whatever it is for the age of that person, if they choose to make that choice, one benefit is they will probably feel and be a little bit more healthy than the kid who chooses to not sleep as much and just play video games through the night. On the other side of this coin, we have what are called costs. And these are, again, outcomes of a choice that are seen as bad or negative to the person who is making that choice. So again, we go back to the student who has chosen to stay up too late. One benefit might be that they get to watch that cool late night show. But there also might be a cost to that, that the next day they feel more tired than they should. Maybe they have an athletic contest and all of a sudden they can't perform as well. So that choice of do I go to bed on time or do I stay up late could have costs and benefits on both ends. Perhaps someone chooses to commit a crime. The benefit of that might be, ooh, I get the cool piece of jewelry I stole, or ooh, I get to drive around the really cool car I just stole, or whatever they're choosing to do. But the cost could very clearly be that they get caught and they're punished and sent to jail or whatever happens to them. So to the person making the choice, hmm, should I commit this crime or not? The cost is going to seem pretty negative to them. And that's what a cost is economically. And so again, if we go back to our definition of economics, which is the idea of people and society making choices about resources that are scarce, meaning there's not enough to go around, for every choice that we make, there are going to be benefits to someone and there are going to be costs to someone else also. Now, we always frame it in the perspective of the person making the choice. So again, if I choose to stay up late, I will experience benefits of that, but I will also experience some costs. Now these costs, many times we instantly think of money, but costs can also be time or risk. So if I choose to stay up late and hang out and watch that cool concert that's on MTV at 11 o'clock, one of the costs is that I'm losing sleep time. It's not really financial. It is a loss of time. And so as we've talked about the definition of economics being all about choices and how we as individuals and countries and societies and the globe make those choices with scarce resources, we will talk about the idea of a cost-benefit analysis. And so it seems like our day is full of choices. What outfit do I wear? What breakfast do I have? What time do I leave for the bus? All of those are choices, and technically they are economic choices because they deal with scarcity. Some are less important than others. But if we were going to go ahead and make an important economic choice like, should I go to college after high school? We may want to compile a cost-benefit analysis. And this is where we as an economic player, a person who's making an economic choice, we sit down and we weigh the costs and benefits of all the alternatives. And we call these alternatives in economics trade-offs. So for example, I have choices after I graduate. I could go into a four-year college, go into a two-year college, join the military, go right into the workforce, 
sit in my parents' basement and eat Cheetos all day. All of those are potential trade-offs for the choice I would like to make. And so a good economic choice maker is going to sit there and create a list of all the costs and benefits of each. Are there benefits to going to a four-year school? Absolutely. Are there benefits to joining the military? Sure. But are there also costs to each? Of course there are. And so you might want to create some sort of a little T-chart to set up the idea of here are the good things that come out of a choice, here are the bad things. That's the cost-benefit analysis. But all of those other things that are alternatives, we call them trade-offs. Now the last thing on this slide, we need to make choices according to our personal criteria. And the word criteria is defined as what are our values on a certain issue. So go back to the should I go to college choice. If I personally value the idea of academic study, then going to a four or two year college is going to look more attractive than joining the military or jumping into a job. On the other hand, if somebody else's criteria or value is to earn money right away because I have to pay off this new car that I just bought, then according to their criteria, jumping in and getting a job right away might be more beneficial a choice. So each person is different. Each person is going to have different criteria surrounding all choices. It matters differently to each person. And because of that, each person has to create their own criteria, explain their own values, and then from there they can make a choice over what they'd like to do and which ones are going to be trade-offs or different alternatives. Let's talk through one of these in a little bit more depth. If we're thinking about going to the movies on Friday night, we might want to list all of the costs associated with that choice. Okay, we're going to have to spend money. We're also not making any money because we're not working. Uh, we're taking time away from our family. We can't hang out with grandma. We're taking time away from sleeping. We don't get to hang out with friends who aren't going with us. We don't get to study. We don't get to do other activities like building the kite or needlepoint again. And the cost of we have to choose an outfit. We have to look cool. So we're going to have to spend all that time to go through the closet and make the perfect combination for the night. On the other hand, there are benefits to this. We get to see a movie. We get to have movie theater popcorn, which we know is the most delicious thing on the face of the earth. We get time with the friends we are going with. We get time away from our family. Maybe our grandmother's a little annoying right now. And so it's great that we get to be away from her. Time away from studying. Time with certain friends. And maybe we get to choose that outfit. We've been wanting to try that new outfit for weeks, and now we have an opportunity to wear it with pride. Now, we've drawn the arrows in there to show you that for any one person, one thing could be a cost, whereas for another person, it could be a benefit. Time away from family. For a young person who loves hanging out with their family and playing board games on that Friday night, going to the movie on the Friday might be a cost. Maybe they really enjoy playing Scattergories. And all of a sudden, they're taken away to watch the best worst movie ever. On the other hand, for someone who doesn't like hanging out with their family, their criteria might be different. Perhaps going to the movie is a great benefit because they get away from their family. So this is what we're saying. Each economic player, each person making a choice, has to make their own cost-benefit analysis based on their own criteria for that issue. And that allows them to then determine what is going to be their choice and what are going to be the trade-offs, the other alternatives. Now in economics, since we like to give a lot of names to very specific things, we have another name to give you. This is the term of an opportunity cost. And in essence, this is your second choice. So for example, you give up doing many other things by making your one choice. Okay, I choose to go to the movie on Friday night. There's a long list of things that you now can't do. Do your hair, wash your car, do your homework. You can't do all those things. And so the opportunity cost, though, is the closest thing that you gave up. So kind of your second place if you were to rank all of your choices on what to do on a Friday night. So look at the bottom there. You can see some college choices. Let's say you're considering where am I going to go. I could go to CU Boulder. Okay, I know where that is. Great. Ooh, I could go to the University of Denver, slightly farther away, more urban, very expensive, but fine, I know what it is. Or you could cross to the Midwest and go to the University of Iowa. Okay, big school, central Iowa, a lot of kids, great athletic tradition, etc. Fine. Or you could go to Creighton University. All right, smaller school, a little bit more intimate setting, far enough away from my parents, etc. 
you do a cost benefit analysis for making that choice. You say, ooh, these, these guys have great opportunities for sports. Oh, this place doesn't. Oh, they've got a great theater program. This place doesn't. And making all the cost benefit figuring and computing that you'd like. Ultimately, if your first choice is to go to CU Boulder, that's just your choice. If in the ranking process, you said, well, if I don't get into CU Boulder, I want to go to the universities in this order, Creighton, then Iowa, then University of Denver, then by definition, your opportunity cost or your kind of second place finisher is Creighton University, because that was your second choice, the one that you gave up most closely in order to take your first choice. That was the opportunity to take the first choice. And so we call that an opportunity cost. Now we don't live in a vacuum. We are not completely alone on our own. For every choice that we make, we try to look at the costs and benefits and use our criteria for a decision that affects only us. But since we don't live on an island and there are other people around and there is society to deal with, we have another part of this to examine. And this is the idea of an externality. And look at the root, external. X means outside or away. And so this is when a choice is made by the economic player, but there's also an effect on other people. So clearly, no choice just affects us. But sometimes that choice can affect other people in a major way. So going back to that college example we just looked at, if you choose University of Iowa and you think, wow, this is great, it's going to hit all of my benefits, it's going to help me in so many ways, there's probably also an externality to it. You are going to be pretty far away from your parents. And so maybe they're like, yes, we got rid of them. Thank goodness they're so far away. That's awesome. Or they might be like, oh, I'm so sad. They're gone. What am I going to do with myself? Either way, you made the choice but your choice affected other people. That is an externality. And so we can divide those externalities into two dimensions, negative externalities or a positive externality. So relatively simply, a negative externality is when an economic player makes a choice, but that puts a cost on someone else. So for example, if an adult chooses to smoke, they have weighed the cost-benefit analysis and for some ridiculous reason, they think that smoking is beneficial to them. Fine, that's their choice, they're an adult. The problem becomes when they are smoking near a child. Their choice to smoke places a negative externality on that child. The child didn't choose to smoke. The child didn't choose to be near the very destructive secondhand smoke. They're just there and they're getting acted upon by somebody else's choice. So that would be a negative externality. You can also have positive externalities where an economic player makes a choice but it benefits other people. So for example, an adult saving money for a child's education. You really want to go to CU Boulder? That's great, it's super expensive, but as an adult, they start saving early. Their choice is a benefit to them because they're choosing to save money for later that they might have to pay for tuition. But it also benefits the kid who goes to college. That kid didn't make any choice about his parents saving, but he reaps the benefits now he doesn't have to take out loans as much. His parents made a choice, he benefits. This leads to an interesting question and an interesting overlap from first semester when we we're talking about government. What if a company or an individual person or a whole country is accruing major negative externalities? They are making all kinds of choices that help them but are hurting all kinds of other people. So perhaps a company is polluting. It helps the company because they get rid of their waste, but it hurts everybody else because it puts pollution into the water that causes birth defects or cancer or something like that. Who's going to step in and referee that? Who's going to come in and tell that company, dude, you gotta stop polluting? And the answer to that is going to be the government at some level, state, local, or federal government. Somebody's going to come in and have to tell that company, no, 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 you have to stop polluting, that is unacceptable. The choice you're making has too many negative externalities for it to be okay, you need to stop. Now, why doesn't the company themselves do that? Why don't they just police themselves and say, oh my goodness, we shouldn't pollute? Objectively, they should be paying attention and they should not be polluting. But there's no incentive for them who's causing the problem 
to change it. And an incentive is basically something to motivate somebody. If the company is polluting, that polluting is helping them. It's getting rid of their waste. Why would they ever want to stop polluting and dispose of their waste in a different way? It's going to get really expensive. It's going to take more time for them. It's going to cause all kinds of problems for them, the company. If a company is after money, they don't want to change how they dispose of their waste because throwing it into the river is the cheapest way. So we have to have an outside referee. And oftentimes that outside referee is the government where they come in and say, stop polluting or else. Hence, all of our regulatory agencies, the FDA, the USDA, CDC, all of those regulatory agencies that we talked about first semester that are in the executive branch, part of their job is to act as referees for things that are going wrong in society. So that's it in terms of the new words, definitions, terms. So if you feel like you're feeling pretty sassy about this and you understand what these terms of cost, benefit, trade-off, externalities, opportunity costs are, you can probably stop watching. But if you'd like a little bit more time to think about these and see if you can test yourself and see how you do, you could go ahead and stop the podcast after each of these practice examples and see how you do. As always, thanks for listening. Please bring in any questions and we will see you in class soon. Thanks.